Hey, it's Mike here, and today, plant versus animal saturated fat. In particular, is plant saturated fat as bad for your arteries as animal saturated fat is? A Patreon contributor was asking some questions about cholesterol and saturated fat, and made me realize I have not talked about a very high quality study from 2019 that can give us some interesting answers about this. It used solid methodology to put red meat, white meat, and plant saturated fat up against each other, and then they looked at cholesterol outcomes. So let's get to it. First quick note though, this video is once again sponsored by Thrive Inside, a gut test that we'll get into more. Also, a lot of you have sent me your gut test results. We'll touch on that in a bit. But first, let's just get to this study at hand, which is in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, a randomized control trial. And it's especially impressive because they didn't just look at an intervention versus a placebo. They really looked at six different diet scenarios here, and they did that by creating a high versus low saturated fat track, and those people switched off between red meat, white meat, and non-meat. Can we just call it plants? <laughs> Each person does the diets in random order. They do the diets for four weeks each. And between the crossovers, they do a few weeks of their normal diet. And this is known as a washout period. This prevents the effects of one diet from carrying over into the next one. They then measured a bunch of different lipid differences, different cholesterol measurements. And the most important one here is LDL or bad cholesterol. And for those that want to be cholesterol deniers, nope. LDL is in fact causally linked to atherosclerosis, to heart disease. A lot of people want to deny it, but I'm sorry, it's true. I've covered a lot in the past, so we don't need to dwell on it here. But the point is these participants were either locked into a high or low saturated fat track, but then they were fully locked into the amount of saturated fat that they were eating. So we could see, was there a difference between red and white meat? Very interesting, we'll get into that. And was there a difference between those meats and plant-based? You get it. From the actual findings, the actual results, which are Quite interesting. They found that LDL cholesterol was higher with red and white meat than with non-meat, just call it plants, independent of saturated fatty acid content. And I will say the plant period was only four weeks despite that the p-value was less than 0 0.0001. That means that there was a less than one in 10,000 chance that this was just a random result. All right, now let's get to those specifics for the results. And you might be wondering how different were these LDL numbers? And I'll tell you, they were not insanely different. And that's for a few reasons. One, these people were still continuing to eat things like dairy and eggs. However, they were roughly the same consumption through all three of those groups. So by no means are we talking vegan, which is why it makes sense why the two meat groups were up around 100 and 102 for the high saturated fat leg of the study, but then the non-meat or plant-based group was down at 95. So, you know, five to seven points lower, which doesn't sound like a lot, but for four weeks, not bad. But this is particularly interesting because we know from populations that vegans have significantly lower LDL. Vegans tend to be around 70-ish on average, depending on the study. And Dr. Esselstyn will say that you should be, you know, between 50 and 70 to be doing better in terms of heart. As you can see here, my LDL when it was tested was 50. And to that point, People are like, oh, you're not gonna have enough cholesterol to make testosterone. No, I have a testosterone video. It was 666. Hail Satan, which yes, is wheat gluten. You know what, why not hail glutesifer? Yeah, that one was a stretch. Anyway, back on topic. Uh, below 100, which is the standard, you should stay below that for the average person on the Western diet, is really not good enough in my humble opinion. And there's so much more to talk about here, but if you care about your heart health and your health in general, then you probably wanna know what your gut health is like. And that brings me once again to the sponsor of the video, Thrive Inside, using those fancy technological techniques to sequence the bacteria in what comes out of your body to learn whether or not you are as healthy as you thought. That was the official script they gave me. I'm kidding. About it. But yeah, they have a really easy to use at home gut test that gets sent directly to your house. Very clean and easy way to get that sample and ship it, boom, right off. And a bunch of you did that and sent me the results and I found them to be super interesting. Some of you were more diverse than me, so good on you. Some of you, we're not doing as well, but you know, there's there's room for improvement. Another cool thing is a lot of you sent me results saying, oh, I thought I had like some digestive issues that would be caused by bacterial diversity, but then they were okay. So now they know to look elsewhere. So pretty awesome stuff. And as usual, you can find my link below, trythrive.com with a Y. Try that's not. Trythrive.com slash Mike. You will find it there.
50% off, 50% off. Now let's look to that lower saturated fat leg, which is 7% of total calories. And yeah, the same relationship where you see the two meat groups hanging up a bit higher and then that plant-based group breaking away and doing better with lower LDL. And this does echo previous findings I've talked about, for example, with coconut oil versus butter, where butter raises LDL a lot and it raises it more than coconut oil. However, coconut oil still raises it. So you can see here, saturated fat, regardless of the source is gonna raise it, but plants for whatever reason seem to be doing a bit better. And we're gonna talk about those reasons. But first I need to prematurely address the haters who tend to be premature, if you know what I'm talking about, losers. <laughs> they uh, would always love to say that large fluffy LDL is totally fine. And this is a situation where it's mainly that large fluffy LDL that is making up the increase for meat in this situation. However, I just need to once again remind people that to studies like this one, large fluffy LDL is associated with an increased risk of heart disease just because it's a little bit less, not even that much less, doesn't mean that you need to latch onto it as a, oh yeah, I'm cholesterol, let me just like snort it. No, no reasonable cardiologist would be like, oh yeah, just increase your large LDL as much as you possibly want and you'll be fine. No, it's clearly just one of those little memes that people tend to latch onto, which is not reflective of real health outcomes anyway. The other major, major finding here, which is pretty obvious is that yeah, white meat sucks as well. It's bad for you. Quote, the findings are in keeping with recommendations promoting diets with a high proportion of plant-based foods, but based on lipid and lipoprotein effects do not provide evidence for choosing white over red meat for reducing cardiovascular disease risk. Yeah, that means everybody eating chicken and turkey and thinking they're super duper healthy and still downing that saturated fat. Yeah, they're, they're kind of a little bit delusional, just letting you know. Now we land on the big question of why. Why are we seeing this difference between plant-based and animal-based? And I have two potential ideas here and we would need other studies to be completely sure that that is it. Well, one sort of has some other studies already. The first one is that we have different types of saturated fat, different ratios of these fatty acids, you know, one might have more palmitic or less palmitic, and it's possible that that is triggering more LDL or less depending on the exact ratios. Too bad this study did not look at that. Another one could simply be the idea that dietary cholesterol raises cholesterol. I have an entire video on this. But even though these groups were matched for saturated fat in the two legs, the high versus low, the cholesterol did vary. There was a somewhat lower cholesterol consumption in that plant-based saturated fat group versus the meat group on either one, high or low saturated fat legs of the study. So that is important to know because we can see that spike of cholesterol after you eat cholesterol. It's been a surprise this was not a major question addressed within the study. However, the study did mention that there are more than just lipoprotein or cholesterol related risks of eating meat. For example, they point to TMAO, that trimethylamine and oxide, which is connected to heart disease as well. And that can be formed from eating that carnitine in meat or choline in eggs worth putting out there. And my final theory, which is probably completely unsubstantiated, is that there could be maybe some phytochemicals that for whatever reason, slightly blunt the LDL increase from an equivalent amount of saturated fat to, you know, what meat would do. Just a thought. In the end, plants are once again better, which is what this channel is all about. <laughs> and it's gonna end up hurting less animals by eating these plants, which are better for you. But yes, the conclusion here is that a gram of saturated fat from animal products is likely more damaging than a gram of saturated fat from plant-based products, which is quite fascinating. This doesn't mean that plant-based saturated fat doesn't have a negative effect. Coconut oil is probably the main reason that certain vegans end up with high LDL. And then they go, what is going on? And then they realize that they've just added like coconut oil spread all over everything religiously for some reason. But this means that a vegan diet gives you a double whammy. Not only are you generally from the studies eating about half as much saturated fat, as people on a standard diet. You're also getting less damage from that saturated fat that you are eating, so the plumbing system of your body can handle it way better. Anyway, that's it for today. Feel free to check out down below that Thrive link, which is trythrive.com slash Mike. Translation, trythrive.com slash Mike. 
for 50% off. Uh, again, feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Appreciate it a lot. Patreon, anything is appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.